overall economical lead. And then team fight lead of Infamous. Game two is a new day, a new draft. And a new Nyx Assassin still available in the pool. Ah! Same old. <laughs> Rinse, repeat, recycle. I wonder what Infamous are going to do about it this time, because they obviously, I think it was the most important hero of the last game in multiple ways. It secured them their mid lane, it gave them all the information that made Infamous's moves fail. Um, so I wonder if they're going to take some sort of a more of a five-man approach where they just pick a lineup that five-mans well, so Nyx's scouting is less Im important. Mm. Um, or if they... Oh, we'll see. Okay, this is some certainly something different. They get Matthew his Tusk, which did win them a game against Team Secret on day one, I think it was. And... It was day one. All right. So this is a team fight approach. Not really any tower hitting just yet, but they can at least uh, get some good five-man going. Uh, this could be... I think you actually hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what Infamous want to do, right? Like, if you if you feel like if we play a slow-paced game, which is what last game was meant to be, you try and force it earlier on, then LGD just... They dodge, they evade, and you can't get the better trade-off. You have to force the issue. Chronosphere will do that. Tuscar can help you do that, at least in the mid lane. So LGD just can't sit back and farm. So maybe that's when... LGD's pick of this Magnus maybe gives away a little bit too much that they are happy to be a little bit more defensive early on. I do think this is the exact logic between picking these heroes to these two heroes together though. I think LGD learned something in the last game that they can even do this earlier now. So the the way this the reason this hero duo has so nice synergy is not because they play off each other well with their spells, it's because their playstyles fit so well together. The Magnus wants to have information so that he and his course can farm, and Nyx, all he wants to do is give information. So it's a nice pairing. It's similar to the duo that IG had incredible success with when they played Ricky Mag. They went Ricky Mag Jugger, I think, in multiple games in a row in the key of Major, and they just couldn't lose. Until eventually they did lose, but I can't remember if they had all the three together. But it's just... It's like the same story. It's just Nyx is the Ricky. And Nyx is a lot better at being strong in the first like five to six minutes, and then if he hits a good level six timing, then he can do the scouting similar to Ricky. Not as well, but pretty close. So, I, I think this opening from LGD is actually really nice. In, well, just in general. We'll see how Infamous want to deal with it. Like, yep. You know what they're up against. They thought about the Rubik in the last game to be the the controlling, stealing kind of, kind of hero. And he never really got the opportunity. Like, you saw him try and get the RP off, but it was always... Something blocking it, and Jakiro. Okay, yeah. This... Take up the pace now. Yep. Infamous want to go and push towers. They're not going to let Magnus just farm this. Oh, I love how they pick him third. Look at that wingspan. It's just like. Nyee. Yeah, this here. Look so, at glide. So supposedly the way it's a bit hard to see the perspective, but the way the heroes are placed is like an outward. Uh, what's that? A V formation. Yeah, yeah it's, so it's, that, it's the flying V. So the hero in the middle is the biggest, and then they get smaller as they go outward. But the, I feel like the depth is a bit deceiving when you look at it. Yep. It doesn't really look completely in-depth, so so but, that makes heroes look really small instead but, of far away. But this is just so badass. It's the fact like he's not even like, he's not even just like sitting on the ground or like doing something with it. Like it's just this glider. Yep. That's all he is like right now. Glider. Glider Jakiro. Yeah, why doesn't the, why don't the wings flap a little bit? Oh, uh, they just had that like that the one little animation, but the rest of it he's just like... <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Now they flapped a bit. Yeah, they'll, they'll flap for half a second and then just... Glide. I feel like hovering like this would be really exhausting. Well, he would actually have to be he's, moving. He's not moving. He's yeah. hovering in place. <laughs> he's, he's hovering while flying. <laughs> but then again, Puck is also levitating. So... Uh, he has wings flapping. His wings are flapping. True. That's something else. Jakiro Jakiro does not <laughs> skip leg day. That's for sure. Just uh, Doesn't skip wing day? Wing day. Wing day. Wing day. <laughs> wing day. Not leg day. Look, look, look at his legs. Like... Uh, he skipped leg day like, every day. What actually. you what you don't understand is underneath what looks to be like like collars and talons, they're actually just like big rubber gloves on his on his feet, and there's just like these tiny little hands underneath because he never uses them. I mean, it kind of does look like th gloves, right? Yeah, they actually do look like gloves. Get on it, Valve. <laughs> okay, this guy's ready to have like a dishwashing session. <laughs> 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 Gotta clean up. <laughs> So let, let's uh, let's ca let's catch up. We got a yep. coddle. 
Um, this is LGD's response to the infamous information that they give them is that, okay, we want to try to push our towers with the Jakiro, and then LGD are like, we want to defend our towers because we want to farm. Mm -hmm. um, so they get the Keeper of the Light. It's a pretty good hero against the Jakiro style push where you set Jakiro in with Liquid Fire and maybe you have another hero hitting it simultaneously and then Kala can try to defend it with Illuminate. And Infamous grab their Puck again. So... I think Infamous will need more push than just the Jakiro. I don't think that's going to cut it against this, if they want to play that way. Oh, and LGD are going to make this game go nicely split with the Ember Spirit. Able yep. to jump everywhere across the map, still be there for, for good team fights. But I agree with you, Infamous need to have a really strong pusher. Someone that's going to be able to function with the 5-on-5 the five five lineup. They ban at the PL. I don't know if that gives us some kind of insight into... Their last pickup, like who does what one position does PL normally cause trouble for? Oh, uh, there's multiple heroes that PL can be annoying for. I'm actually not really sure what the idea is here. Uh, Infamous might want Drow. Hmm. PL is good against Drow, and uh, Drow is good with Puck and the Jakiro, and then they have more push and they can try to five man. I think it's still going to be a difficult game to play, but it is an approach that could take this game if they yep. manage to organize their pushes very well. Razor ban down by most, LGD. It's the most likely for me, actually. It's also a hero that uses Chronosphere fairly well when it's farmed. Drow can get a lot of hits off and get kills. Just conceptually, if they go for Drow, I think I like their draft more this game. And they're going to get PA instead, <laughs> though. <laughs> okay, Drow is safe guarding themselves. Drow is not happening. It could still happen. But at the same time, this is, this is nice for Infamous. Like, you don't have that much harassment if they decide to have like some aggressive style lane, leaving the Void up on the top to go one-on-one -on -one with the Magnus. Then the Jakira plus one can be on bottom lane, so the Tuscar roaming around. Like This kind of stuff is possible, and it's very easy to harass with a Jakira. Yeah, they could, just play, they could just play the Void Carry, of course, and get an they offlaner, could. or get another mid-hero and put Park offlane there. E even Void and Jakira together, dual offlane is fine too, like, uh, whatever they want to do. It's fine. There's plenty of options here for Infamous to move their heroes around as they please. I think the thing that is more or less locked is that you want the Tusk on support. You could even put Jakira mid. Uh, we haven't seen that for a while, but it is a possibility. Who's the best hero against a PA? If you could have anyone, who's the uh, best hero against the PA? Hmm. Good question. Because the Ember, I think they are, they're able to deal with, w with what they have at yeah, the moment. Yeah, the heroes are okay against Ember. But they need a controller against the PA. They don't have magical burst damage, It's so always hard to answer those kind of questions without looking at the hero roster. <laughs> it's... I'm gonna I'm yeah. Gonna just just hit the button Qu quickly. Have you, a can look. you can still watch the draft of my screen. You're fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is this when you get your Zeus? So, <laughs> so generally, I think what what PA struggles against is heroes that have really high spell burst in the beginning, but that also can transition into dealing physical damage later with uh, MKB or Silver Edge. There are a couple of like hybrid heroes of that style. A farm Shadow Fiend can be pretty difficult to deal with. He has the raises mm -hmm. early on, and he wants to go Silver Edge. That is a good pick against PA, that type of hero. He's available, not banned out. Yep. Uh, and we get a Death Prophet. DP is actually not bad either. She has uh, some magic damage early on with her Crypt Swarm, and the ghosts can't be evaded. So I, I like that pick here. I think it's also a good lane matchup against Ember. So And it's good synergy with the, with the Chrono. I think this was a really nice pick, actually, from Infamous. It also gives them the pushing that we wanted from them. Everything. So, looking at this, that... that that might have been the perfect choice for this particular game. I'm very excited for this pick from Infamous. I think that shows a very good understanding of what they need to do. Did you ever watch um, The NeverEnding Story? No. The movie NeverEnding Story? That's a shame. For everyone who's listening in right now, does Keeper of the Light's horse not look like NeverEnding Story? I don't know. He horse, has two horses on my screen. But with wings. It looks like an abomination. It, it keeps happening to you, but the, the, the Jakira looks amazing. I think it's because I when you tab out to look at heroes or whatever, it reloads it. Yeah, and then gives you multiples. Oh, now I only have one. Oh. When you tab out again and back in, or not tab, but just go to the menu. PA so looks so cheeky with that mask on. And she gives this grin when she does her taunt of just like, eh, my swords are bigger. <laughs> like, I, lo I love that arcana, though. I think it's really nice. Yeah, that does actually look sick. But uh, she, she doesn't just have the base arcana. There's, there's more with Yeah, there's, that. there's more. But what I really like about the arcana that PA has is that it's very, in a way, it's... It's very clean, is the best way I can explain it. Like, the, there's really cool animations, There's, but it's not over the top, you know, for my taste. I just think it, it's just... The things it edits in the game, and the way the hero works, and the way the audio goes, and the, like, the sound you get when you crit, it's like... Yeah. It's, just, it's just clean for me. I think it's very... It's one of my favorite items in the game, is the Pierre Arcana. It's very, very nice. 
All right, let's uh, let's talk Dota. Yeah. Well, it's still oh, Dota. Yeah. Are we oh. Dota? But uh, let's talk uh, competitive gaming. Okay, competitive gaming with predictions. The players will give us more time for this. So, team with the first Roshan kill. If we must be focusing more on tower, so I kind of lean with the, the PA side going for getting Roshan earlier. It, both teams can take it. It's like strictly from a draft perspective, I would give it to Radiant, but I just think LGD are the better team, and they're gonna get it. That's the yeah. only reason. Team we place the most observed wards by the end of the game. Coin toss. Who do you want? Uh, I go with LGD right, just because I, I think Infamous. they're still gonna win because they're gonna have more money. Play with the most kills at ten minutes. Ember. I'm I'm getting Somnus this time. I'm not going to make the same mistake again. I'm going to go with Tomato. All right. I think Tomato is going to have the success. Longest on. kill streak. Oh, PA. I could definitely see PA, but at the same time, it's not the best PA game ever. I actually think Ember has a better a better matchup in this game than PA does. But then PA gets like a like a ramp. I'll do Ember as well. Let's go. You, you, do can, you, can, you can do PA. I, I, I'll, go, I'll go with PA. I'll go with PA. It's more exciting if we have different choices. Okay. It, it's, ex it's exciting for us, but we're not helping the people at home if we're doing this. Like, <laughs> we're at least giving you two options to choose from. We're showing you all the wrong picks. <laughs> well, we, I don't think we have a really good win rate with the predictions. I think I had a, I had a 50%. I had a four out of four game last night with Shiver. Okay. Wow. Obviously, that's it. Yeah, he's going to leave me behind. I got a four out of four and a two out of four, I think. That's serious. That was pretty good. Right. No invasion for runes this time around. There is some nice aggressive vision. Not going to block any camp up on the top. But this little sucker right here is going to watch the LGD support of Yao moving very closely, giving King Tekka a little bit more space for his puck on the, op on the top lane. Tomato and Matthew going to team up in the mid lane. That's it's a strong a, lane, by the way. It's a Nix and Ember they're up against. Is it strong enough to go against the next Ember? Yeah, they win this lane if they play it right. Just In Infamous' this lane is very strong. Just Shards and Siphon? Exactly. And the Flame Guard is way too weak on level 1. Now, Mana Burn is really annoying, so I think if you're Infamous right now, you would, you want to just go on this Ember right away, I think. Just uh, keep him busy. Well, Death Prophet hasn't leveled anything up just yet. Looks like they're waiting for the level 2 before they make any kind of play. Bottom lane, Acel is going to realize that he doesn't have a camp to actually stack. And got blocked up by the Observer one that Eleven put on the bottom lane. So it's just a one-on-one -on -one sort of matchup until Acel can do exactly this. Stack, farm, and they are going on the mid. Victoria Ooh, having trouble getting there. out of the shards. They need an extra hit up the hill. It misses as well. It wouldn't be enough to find the kill, but... That really didn't look like he could get around those shards, but there was just barely a little crack he could sneak through there. Just suck it up, breathe it in. You'll squeeze. But this is this is still going... Yeah, now they're both level 2 and the Ember is level 1. So he's going to get his level 2 now, but this level 2 doesn't really do very much for Ember. The breaking point here is level 3 and especially level 5. His, uh, his Flame Guard is extremely bad, so he needs to be very careful to not get out of position here. Mm -hmm. The good news for them is that Tomato has almost no mana left. I wonder why. <laughs> Um, how are the other lanes going? So, Puck top is getting what he can. King Tekka is on the side here. Skilled phase shift to avoid Illuminate. Gonna get his level 2 in the tree line. And 11 bottom is 2.5. And, and they did open that camp that uh, Magnus blocked. So that will be available from level 2, from minute 2. Wait, right. what just what just happened to XL? What? What? Hmm? He was pulling, and then the creeps were just like, nope. And then he had to pull them back again. They just changed their minds. It was like, nah. I think I'd rather rather live a little bit shorter, just go to lane and die fast, but he was like, nope, you gotta come back here. Man, this all oh, middle lane, Somnus in trouble, the shards actually locked him in on the radiant side of the river, the damage, Matthew, one more punch, and he'll find the kill, no, the orb of venom, he's dropped down to 16 HP, King Tech is coming over, they'll cancel the salve, he'll get the die. arcane rune and get away, but yep, there's your snowball forward, and Matthew will spill first blood onto Somnus. Yeah, but you didn't pick Matthew. <laughs> Alright, Estella kind of like committed almost the Cardinal Sin as well for Takira. Yeah, I leveled Liquid Fire, overgoing Dual Breath, first level. It always feels a little bit odd. It's, uh, you can make a case for both. If you're playing a hard 5 Jakiro, you don't really have the money to get the amount of century, or <laughs> the, the amount of clarities that it requires to spam out Dual Breath. It's a very expensive ability. Mm. Uh, but I would say most of the time Dual Breath level 1 is indeed better. But the nice thing about dual uh, about the liquid fire is that it's free. So yeah.
but then you sit there with a full mana pool going, ah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> uh, you know. Like if, if you're pushing a tower, most definitely understand it. Like liquid fire is so good when you're going underneath the tower early on. So what he's doing right now, I don't think is worth it. Uh, Jakiro is one of the best supports of doing this. He can just farm the jungle camp like this, but he should be pulling. There's two open camps that they could just pull from, and right now they're basically just giving Magnus experience for no reason when they could deny him as much as possible. It seems they wait until they do the stack. Like, so a cell doesn't do, like, the, the pull into secondary pull. Uh, he preps the stack first, but that's when we saw Eleven come over, skilled up in power, and then actually took some of the last hits. He comes over and contests the stack. Yeah. I, I still think overall it's better for Infamous that that happens. King Tech is trying to do the same thing. Well, Excel made a stack here, gets the rune. Oh. Mid lane. Oh, oh, the shards didn't get him. They didn't lock him in. Mana burn will take a little bit off Tomato, but now this, this mana burn is not doing anywhere near as much as they need it to. Uh, you got stick charges as well as bottle charges to get him in, in just in mana range to get enough spirit siphons up to attack the Ember. And they can split the charges between himself as well as the Tuscar if they need to to get Snowball and shards up. Yep. Ah, this, this lane is still very hard for Somnus. You can tell it's just a different type of game than the previous one. He's, uh, he's being doubled up on CS by Tomato, this one. Yep. Such a good DP pick. I'm still very, very impressed with that choice. They took a lot of time to, uh, to pick it as well. That's one of the big benefits of having so much time in the last phase. Is when you're last pick and you can get that, like, perfect pick in the end, it can have a really high impact on the game. And this pick so far has, has proven to be a really great choice. Right, he's trying to keep his clarity up as long as possible. Puck. King Tech is able to get himself out of Victoria. trouble on the top lane. <laughs> hey, I have mana burn. I was about to say, you know what? I don't want to play in this game. I don't want to play DP because of that mana burn. It's just so annoying. But at the same time, he's doing really well. And it's a good lane apart from that. It's just, that's a nuisance. But they're playing around it the best they can. Oh, Somnus here could... Uh, Matthew's being very patient here. He's just waiting for a very long time for an opportunity in mid. As Eleven somehow killed the Jakiro. Okay, I was He's not looking for that. Skewered and shockwaved. I only just caught the tail end of it. And that patience from Matthew maybe wore off a little bit too. Somnus was back at his tower and the shards were well off target. Unless they go in for round two. And, well, that's exactly what they do. The Spirit Siphon holding him inside the shards. Tomato doesn't have enough mana for a Crypt Swarm. That would be it. It would be enough to get the kill, but it's just not there. Matthew has to back up and now burn the shrine. So all three players from LGD will come back up to full health and mana. They forced a rotation from the Caudal, though, and forced the shrine to be used. This is still a good play from Infamous. It's going to help the Tomato for the next fight, because yeah. he just picked up the uh, the haste rune as well. They're going to go use their own shrine now. Uh, this should be a kill in mid soon. Ember is going to just now get level 5, but I still think they could kill him uh, through that flame guard until he's 6. This so. Phantom Assassin has been having the best time of anyone, though. Like He's sitting at 3k net worth up on the top, completely uncontested. Hit his level 6. Like King Tech is getting as much as he can out of the lane, but there's only so much you can do against a PA. Yeah, this is... Uh, I mean, it's a pretty good lane for Puck in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, but the, just the impact of the Coddle in the beginning is enough to make oh, this... Oh, Snowball! Wow, that's deep! To the Tier 2 tower, in fact. They committed the Exorcism, and Tomato, thanks to that Haze Strune, has got the movement speed to get away. Matthew may not be so lucky. The stun uphill from Victoria, able to connect to the Tuscar, hoping that four armor is going to protect him, plus the boots, a quick slow, and Shockwave. It was a skewer slow that found that kill, and, uh, well, I was kind of waiting for that when PA hit level 6 to get a kill, and it happens. Puck will drop. Went to Coddle, though. Guess he got him with an Illuminate there. And Yao is being very efficient, by the way. That's one of the benefits of Coddle. If you if you compare the Coddle and the Jakiro, Coddle is a level and a half ahead. He's just getting a lot more out of the pulling and farming top than the Jakiro is. They're coming again. Spirit Siphon. Somnus doesn't have a spirit up. There Maybe. goes the Shards. Starts the spirit and we'll be able to get away. They're going to need to skill Silence now to kill him. Yep. On the DP. He might skill it now on level 7. It'll be interesting to see. It's not that common for DPs to do that. Most of the time you want to either get a high level Crypt Swarm or the Siphon, but in this situation I, I would like to see one Silence point. It's three seconds Silence. It will definitely do a lot of damage indirectly, just because the Siphon will keep running at least that way. It's LGD, the group up for the first time. Four heroes together, two under the Converse, Smoke, Victorious, Royal Somnus. 
They'll move around the Dire Observe Ward, finding Matthew, allowing him to get that easy center pill for, for uh, Victoria. And Snowball, well, save for a second, and the Shards give him vision to go down to the camp. Somnus will follow through with the Fire Remnant and get the kill. So, four heroes rotated. They do find one kill. Somnus needs still to get another kill in the next one minute and 35 seconds. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> why, why are you putting that time limit on him? Because at 10, the predictions end. Oh. And he's currently one kill behind Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I got, I got Tomato. Tomato needs to find a kill. He needs to find two. Oh, that's problematic. Okay, feed time. <laughs> <laughs> just all chat. Hey, hey, would you mind just uh, getting me fantasy points, please? Uh, that's all you gotta do. And we yeah. haven't seen much of the void just yet. It's been nine minutes, and he's kind of just been farming bottom, similar to what the PA did. I wonder when they want to activate this Chronosphere because their lineup is very, very good at playing around it. Oh, they need levels on the Jakira before that's really gonna work. It's like, good with DP. There's yeah, DP. DP can function with it, but DP's kind of like comboing with the Tuscar at the moment, and it's too far to connect the two. But on bottom lane, just forcing the tower down with Liquid Fire and Dual Breath, and this is no easy kill. The Caudal has joined bottom lane to try and delay this tower, and that I guess the Mag is just gonna leave, go to the jungle, let Caudal try to repel the bottom push as long as he can. Seems easy enough. He's gonna lose the tower on this wave, I think, if he doesn't get help. Void can just time walk off the Illuminate, and the, the wave is still gonna be alive. The Jakira will get hits in. Actually, with both of the calls off the lane. Well, they need like to use Ice Shards as well. They need to nuke out the lane. Oh. Okay, that's, that didn't hit anything. It's <laughs> looking for Yao in the trees. No, not getting it like this. This is taking really long. This is actually super good for LGD. How long time this tower push is taking, how much Yao is getting out of this indirectly. Just, just buying time for his team, you know? Mm -hmm. There it goes. Just gonna walk that off and then start hitting. Jakira needs to get over there now. Yep. Liquid fire, liquid, liquid fire is required to keep diving the tower like this. Same time Death Prophet has the time for life, like you rotate down the bottom lane to fight this, she's gonna burn Exorcism and take the tier 1 tower in the mid. Or, worse, TP down and then uh, it's it's infamous fighting underneath their own tower with Chronosphere up. Oh, Victoria so Victoria moves so. over. Now put the Liquid Fire in to start with. Dual Breath gonna catch both Somnus as well as the Assassin and the Chrono. It also grabs both, but support is here from LGD. Yao, that Illumina did so much damage, Faceless Void cannot time walk in time. Mainly because he was RP'd up. So two heroes lost, Chrono burnt, and it's LGD who are the ones that get the two kills and the T1 tower on top lane in favor of Phantom Assassin. Yeah, they didn't have a uh, DP connected with that Chrono. That's the problem. Is she gonna kill Tomato? She jumps in, Mask of Madness is up, look at the crits, and the Illumina from Yao will find the kill. And while all that's going on, a Selby gets picked off by Victoria as well as Somnus. LGD have just, they've uh, put the foot down. They're ready to run. Uh, this is this is such a big minute for them. Pretty much just went from a fairly close game to very LGD sided with those that sequence of events: the fight bottom, the kill top on the tower, and this kill on the DP mid. Who is the 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 one hero on the radiant that was having the best game is now being slowed down as well. And Amy is yeah, and Power gonna be starting to farm up very nicely. He does so much damage so quickly too. The bottom I guess tower is finally falling. I'm, like, I'm wondering if, even if Spirit Siphon is going to be strong enough to stop PA from killing everybody. You snowball to protect yourself from the Stifling Dagger, oh. and there it is again. You'll have to flip him up, and the Shards, it block, blocks out a little bit. King Tacker, do you want to commit the Dream Call for this? There is no real follow-up. Has to phase shift away from the Shockwave. But then in another side, it's Tomato getting caught out by Somnus and Victoria. A cell, a dual breath, at least try and create a little bit of slow and burn damage, combining with the Crypt Swarm, but Somnus's Flame Guard protects him from most of this. Both teams are going to shrine. They, they want to look for a fight now with this uh, Vendetta. Flame Guard is up in 15. They can just go again straight away. Try to look for a pick. This Void would be a very good kill for LGD. Just the other other thing as well, the fact that Coddle, if he uh, Chakra, um, the PA, you got double stifling daggers yep. too. Strong. Like that's so much burst damage, which you may not be expecting. 
And here they go. You actually do the chakra into onto the Ember Spirit, so it's the Searing Chains with low cooldown. The stun oh. well off target from Victoria, where they blinding line him back, and she doesn't work with Somnus because his spirit jumped forward, so Ben Jazz finds the space he wants to just time walk away. Well, a bit of miscommunication and mistiming from LGD there that's going to cost them a bit on their mid tower. They'll fight mid. And they jump. It's actually... Oh, the damage to Mata, the RP! Skewers into the two of them. Tuscar was meant to be the aggressor. And it turns into a double kill for Amy. And this could also be the mid-tier one. They will push pretty fast. They have two empowered heroes. Uh, this PA hits very quickly with the Mask of Madness. It actually turns it into a decent pushing hero. Look at this. Silence up on top lane. Ember, Somnus. Actually, his Flame Guard still doing work, protecting him from the damage of a cell. Victoria's moving into. He just needs to attack one time into King Tekka. Able to do so, and the stun. Ah, didn't go for both. That's just happy killing off the core. Mid lane. Yep, Could I'm watching it. it. The hilarious thing is, is Yao, who's currently got the best kill streak at three to zero. <laughs> but there's a couple of swords in the ground in the mid. I, I always love this. Like you want to talk about like the great Arcanist, how they have the little words like "Don't leave me here" from Matthew. Oh, that's pretty cool. And the, the and the damage output, or like, what were the chances? R and Jesus. Alright, so Infamous are going to group up, and is this, like, they have to use their five-man fight, right? Like, we have a team yep. together, Chrono, Exorcism, let them, okay, I wouldn't say Macro Pie, but it's level five to Cure. Uh, that in, that in itself was a problem. XL is very underleveled this game, considering the type of lane that they had. He was basically free to pull in Greed and just hasn't got enough out of it. No, oh, Victoria nice entry top. ward. Matthew reacted, however, Victoria. Don't know if he cottoned on to the fact they may have had a ward around there. But they're not even going to fight it. Eleven creep skipping on the bottom lane, working with Yao. PA is going to come down. Oh, look at this play again. Ah, it's tier one for tier one. <laughs> Snix Assassin first base pickup. It's the tier one safe lanes for tier one safe lane. There we go. This PA is getting so far. King Tech up. Dead. Like, actually dead. Veil of Discord is up from Somnus. They had the amplification to work with. But it was the Nyx Assassin just stalking him as he walked into the lane. Charge from Matthew. Gonna try and do something about this. Spike Carabas makes it difficult. Not to mention the double slide of Fist Searing Chains. Ember Spirit needs help. And it's on the way. Phantom Assassin is coming in. And they've stunned up the big one. Tomato just locked in there. Phantom Assassin is able to find that kill. And one extra crit. A double double kill. And got his first one in the mid lane before. And now he gets another one up on top. And I believe with that. Yeah! <laughs> points. Uh, let's, let's see in the end. I think you might actually end up being right because PA is so far. Yeah, Ember yeah, had yeah. a hard mid lane and he's recovered very nicely and can still get a, a monstrous game. But this PA is just out of control, man. Like this is how far she's able to get the kills too. Like you just jump in and pop. Yeah. Because he, the, it's, the, it's the solo experience, right? Like no one had to try and leech the experience off your lane. You look at the hero level difference at the moment and it's level 14 on the Phantom Assassin compared to the other safe laner. Like, three, four levels in front, still ahead of the mag, still ahead of the Ember Spirit. Yeah. Top lane, they found the fuck again. Yep. In the tree lines, King Tekka, Snowball forward, knocking me off control in time. Victoria finds that kill, Chronosphere. It's nice on two, but the RP pulling Tuscar out, as well as Matthew ba Benjaz. They're beating up to Victoria. They're able to get the kill to the next assassin, but here comes your Phantom Assassin. Jumps forward, oh. crits, mid time walk. Say goodbye to Matthew. What's the next target? Tomato is nearby, and well, you've got the lifesteal. Why not? You want to go? Tomato, he's hiding behind the tree lines. He'll turn on at least the exorcism. Ice Path will keep him away. The Shockwave does its damage. Here comes Somnus. Gets the Searing Chains and now Blink in and the damage. Somnus will take the kill. King Tekka trying to find something in return but now oh, ha, ha, ha! the damage is so much PA underneath the Shrine is trying to kill off King Tekka. He can jump himself out but it's taken too long. Unstoppable streak is ended. A cell will pick himself up a thousand not to mention finally levels. He hits level 8 on the <laughs> death of that Phantom Assassin. Yeah. I mean, I, I... Uh, how much experience did he get? So he got uh, 
<laughs> he got fourteen hundred experience. <laughs> I don't. I don't blame Amy for that play. It's like you know, <laughs> you have empower. You have mask of madness. You're super fat. You're so far ahead. You're just feeling the rush. You know that, that this hero is so momentum based and so fun to play when. I'm blaming him. He just ended his kill streak. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, Eleven flopped, and uh, Snowball will follow the skewered target. So Magnus. Having trouble running away, Victoria the neighborhood finds King Tekka, able to land the stun while Eleven blinks out. He cannot escape the damage from the Shans, however, but support is, is Yao, bringing in Somnus, looking for the kill. The Spike Carap has already locked up Matthew, a nice quick jump away from King Tekka, but he's locked in. It was the Searing Chains that still held its effect. One quick Illuminate phase shifts it out, but really, he thought he dodged the wave, but it gets clipped by the tail. It's not that easy to dodge Illuminate with a level 1 phase shift. It's uh, actually very difficult. Amy's building Tomato. up his, uh, Oh boy! Time dilation's gonna be there. Ice Pant hold the PA in position. And he's just gonna move to the easier target. Which at this point, it kind of is everybody. But it's the one who cannot time walk off the damage. So he kills off the Chikiro. Tuskar Snowball gonna come back after Phantom Assassin. That's a Desolator, a Mask of Madness there. You know how much damage you do. And he knows. He just keeps pushing the, the envelope. They can't kill him with these heroes. They're... King Tech is coming in to help. Eleven's nearby. Empower buff up. He actually, uh, yeah, empower buff up over on the PA. In goes Somnus. He's taking the silence as well as the dream call. And PA currently is farming up Alpha Orbs. That's very eternal envy. Ben oh, Jazz jumps in. Here. Nice ice pass. Somnus is going to fall. The shockwave. We're going to revenge kill onto Benjaz, but again, it's Acel who's the man doing the damage to get the last hit. And Amy being pulled to top by the Coddle, that's going to be a tower. Just moving everywhere so quickly. I'm wondering what uh, Jakiro even buys if he's like, yo boys, I think I need like a rod of Atos to try, try and control this PA. Uh, it's going to be a BKB coming up pretty soon as well, and it's too late. Oh. He almost has it. Okay, then what? Y Vale's already there from the park. This money has to do something for him. Yule Scepter at least gets rid of the Flame God of the Ember Spirit. I think at this point you maybe have to go Ghost, but you don't really want to because it's only good against PA. But if you don't have it, you're just going to die. Yeah. It's going to kill you. It's, um... I want to say this... Playing PA in this type of game where you have Empower and a good start in lane and it's a good pick against some of the enemy heroes, it's like some of the funnest Dota you can play. I love this hero a lot. I, it's one of my favorite heroes to play. And like, if you, you just feel like the king of the world in this game. You know, the enemy carry void is just not good against this hero. The magic damage that they had from the other heroes is nice. Like the Jakiro, the Death Prophet, the Puck can definitely do it. But he's just too far ahead. And when the BKV comes in, who's he's? I, I don't see them killing this hero. Yeah, he, he actually can't die in BKV. He's immortal. In BKB. They're not going to kill him. You've now got an Agadim Scepter from... Yeah, Yao is 21 minutes into this game and he just finished up his Agadim Scepter. You're going to have the heal during daytime on top of the insane lifesteal. And LGD, yeah, in you go. Yep. We're going to get this one right, Toby. We're going to get the Roche. I mean, this one right. Wait, you didn't pick that. I don't know. I, I picked I picked LGD to get first. Oh, you did? Done. Okay, so we're going to get that. And the player played the longest streak. I had, I had Amy. But I had um, player with the most kills at 10 minutes being Tomato and ended up being Matthew. Yeah, why didn't we see that coming? Uh, it's, it, it's such a hit and miss for who gets the last hit sometimes. <laughs> so many. Yeah. You know, PA just solos Roshan. So you've now got an aggressive hero now having an extra life. And there's nothing they can do to contest him. I actually don't think you should take the Aegis. I think they should have given it to the, to the Ember, to be honest. I feel like the PA can't die anyway. The one, the, the logic here might be that PA will be the one hitting the base. Like if you're hitting the towers, you would like to have the Aegis. Oh, they just, uh, they bring him up. Enough. He's like farming the mid. What else do you want me to farm? Okay, Matthew? Sure. <laughs> okay, I'll farm Matthew. Snowball out. And boom. Another. I was too slow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that pops up if I'm looking in Dota TV and when I when I highlight that stuff. I'm not sure actually. Yeah, I don't I know why. If it, if it actually follows me click for click. Just to just to finish off on that Aegis thought though, like what you yeah. generally do is you either give the Aegis to a hero that has extreme value out of a second life, a hero like Storm Spirit, where you get a full mana pool and that makes a big difference, or you give it to the hero sieging the base, which in this case will be the PA over the Ember, of course. Ember is a really nice hero with Aegis though as well, like he can do so much with the second life. So you're like, you're looking at, okay, what's more important, that our hero sieging the base has the safety net, or that we have this high value hero with the second life. 
I mean, I'll be honest with you, I think in this case it doesn't really matter who they give it to with this kind of extreme advantage that they've already built. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to point out right now that Yao is possibly the best team player ever. So he keeps dragging the PA in to fight and then just runs at the enemy hero and then recalls in Amy again. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's all he is doing. He is the perfect transport. You take the tower, you keep pushing the wave out, the Empower is worn off now, so... 11, you got a job to do, bro? <laughs> Screw RP. It's called, it's called buffing the PA. <laughs> And there you go. Empower. Oh, he's gonna wait two seconds. This is this is inefficiency. Done. God damn that PA. She's gonna have a butterfly by 25 minutes if, if this game if this game keeps going at the rate's gone. Yeah. Well, found a target. Down and bottom lane. Tomato caught out. Searing chains will hold it there. PA not nearby, so they don't find that early crit, but. With the up. fact the Spirit Siphon is there, here you go, 11 pulls him back into Yal's Illuminate! And into two Stifling Daggers. <laughs> it was the Double Daggers? Yeah. I, I don't even think the second one reached in time. What happens with the uh, Talon Tree though, like when you do Chakra as well as like the level 25? The Double Double? Yeah, Double Double. Oh, Puck, jump down. Yeah, Amy's actually focusing now on objectives. Beating into the tier 3 tower, getting rid of this. It's daytime now as well, so Yao's sustain to this team fight is, is insane. Everybody heals up. Never ending spam, never ending vision. And I'm wondering how long it's going to take before Infamous just agrees that this game is done. Because LGD, like, it would take a miracle to win this, and maybe they can find it. You got your first. It's the faceless void Chrono, but Jakira was too far away and didn't have Macropire available. Dream Call RP is down. They're looking for the damage. The BKB protecting Tomato. Now it's up to the Snowball to do it. They pull them all in, but two are caught straight away. Triple kill. When everyone's that close, the cleave is even easier. And Phantom Assassin will end this game. 13 1 4 14 14 1 4. Phantom Assassin. Three corrects and 75%. <laughs> Brilliant wait, wait. game for LG. Oh, they placed the same amount of wards. I picked Infamous for wards. We were both right. We were both right? Yeah, both placed 11. Well played, Cinderin. Well we played. Go. Uh, you, got, uh, you got one more than me again, Toby. It's, can't uh, live with this. That's it. Next game, Cinder will be doing the play-by-play. -play. I'll be doing the analysis, and uh, it will be the worst cast ever. I'm down. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'd be good at play-by-play. -play. Your analysis not so sure about Yeah, uh, I think Valve just cottoned on to what we wanted to do, <laughs> and uh, we're being replaced for the next game, so uh, <laughs> we'll have different casts for the second series. We got fired. See you guys. Yeah, but we'll be back for uh, for game three. I think it's up to Cap and Draskal, uh, who are stepping in to cast the next games up, but we will be back later today for series three and four, EG versus Infamous and Newbie versus HR, but stay tuned. There is more Dota coming out in all four streams. We are, of course, number four here at TI7.